is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where today, as always, we're going to look at the markets for Standard, Modern, and Legacy, and see what is going on with cards, which ones are going up in value, and which ones are going down in value. Now, I will tell you, this is another slow week for the market. There's a few reasons for that, and I'll get into them as we go through the video today. But quickly, before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Amazon affiliate store. If you make any purchases via the links there to any sellers on Amazon, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. It really goes a long way. Secondly, we have our Patreon page linked below as well, another way to help us out. Now, having said that, let's get into the cards for today. Let's begin with the cards of loss value this week in standard. Now the standard market is very, very soft. You're going to see that as we go through right now. There's a couple of reasons for that. One of which is the fact that the banned and restricted list is about to be updated in about a week and a half. And I have a strong feeling that something is going to be banned from the Marvel decks, maybe Etherworks Marvel itself. The teamer version of that deck has been incredibly powerful and has completely taken over the metagame, really choked the diversity out of the standard format. And that's the second reason. A lot of players are just tired of standard because of the lack of diversity. They're just not interested in the format currently. And they've kind of seen this movie before. It's happened in the last couple metas. We saw this with Mardo Vehicles. We saw it with Copycat. So players are just turning to other ways to play Magic, like Commander or even Modern. So let's see what's going on with these cards. Coming in at number five, Nissa Steward of Elements, down $1.39 to $9.87. Now, the raw power level for this card is definitely there. However, she never really found a foothold in standard. She saw a little bit of play in like four color control decks, but is it control is really the control style that has risen to the top out of the control builds in the format. So if she was kind of left behind, she is going to continue to drop about a month or two ago. I think I said that I'd feel comfortable paying maybe eight, nine dollars for her. Actually, I changed my mind at this point. I feel like she's going to drop even below that over the next few weeks. Now, anything could happen if a major banning shakes up the format, sure. But I think for the most part, she's a card to plan for for the future, maybe post-rotation. Coming in at number four, Ronos the Indomitable, down $1.46 to $12.25. So he's been dropping pretty steadily since pre-release, which isn't too surprising as packs get open. That's pretty normal. But this card is starting to find a foothold in a few places. In Standard, it is seeing some play in some energy decks. And also, even in Modern, it's showing up in the Company Counters deck. Even if it's just a one-of, uh, that deck actually did really well last weekend at the Modern GP. So something to watch for. I do think the decline for this card will start to slow down and it will begin to stabilize. Coming in at number three is Relentless Dead, down $1.75 to $15.67. Now, remember a few weeks ago when this card was on top of the world, it was $25, it was winning Pro Tours, but a lot has changed over the last few weeks. First off, we kind of knew the price would come down because in this current day and age of Magic with high print runs, it's very hard to keep a standard card up around $20, $25. It's almost unheard of. So you knew there was going to be some kind of snapback after all the hype from the Pro Tour. But secondly... The zombie decks have been having some trouble in the meta due to cards like Sweltering Suns and Chandra Flamecaller. And because of that, a lot of players are jumping off the zombie decks and moving on to different things like Etherworks Marvel or even Is It Control, which is a little more popular right now. Coming in at number two is Liliana Death's Majesty, down $1.89 to $13.62. Now, on paper, you feel like this should fit into those zombie decks, but it never really found a home there. Liliana the Last Hope kind of took that spot. It was just more economical. And coming in at number one, he continues to drop. Gideon of the Trials, down $2.23 to $13. Now, Gideon hasn't really found a foothold in Standard, but he is seeing a little bit of play in Legacy as well as Modern. Legacy in the Esper Deathblade decks, and in Modern in some of like the Azorius Control decks. So I do think he will start dropping a little bit slower over the next week or so, and then probably stabilize. And this is another card that has potential in a future standard meta, maybe post-rotation. All right, let's move on to the cards that are gaining value this week. And you're going to notice, much like last week, these are very, very small gains. Coming in at number five is Dragon Master Outcast, up 13 cents to 345. There's a couple of reasons for this. The first is the Is It Control decks in Standard are actually having a lot of success with this card. And that's actually pretty cool because this card was right in front of our face the whole time. 
players are now stumbling on how good it is in those builds. It's really helped that deck along a little bit. Secondly, we had a big leak last week involving the Commander 2017 product. We got to see some of the cards a little bit early from the Dragon deck, which has brought a lot of interest and spotlight onto Dragon Tribal. Coming in at number four, Dark Intimations, up 22 cents to 74 cents. Now, again, last week we had a little bit of news. Nicol Bolas, the new Planeswalker, the God Pharaoh, was accidentally previewed early by Wizards themselves. <laughs> so now the players have seen it and they're starting to think about what they want to do with that card, especially in Commander Circles. This card is getting a little bit of interest. Number three, Anointed Procession, down 47 cents to 4.99. Speaking of Commander, this is a phenomenal Commander card and actually has been on the list for a few weeks now. Coming in, number two is Sweltering Suns of 50 cents at 3.46. And I mentioned this earlier, but the card is doing a lot of work in Standard. It's keeping the zombie decks under control, among other small creature decks as well. But it's seeing play in all the major decks, basically, at this point, which is Marvel Works decks, it's showing up in the Is It Control decks, it's showing up in Energy decks. It's even seeing some play in the world of Modern and Titan Shift, so this is definitely one to watch for the future. Coming in at number one, Chantra Flamecaller, up 60 cents to 7.49. Another card that is there to keep zombies under control, and it's seeing play, of course, in the Marvel decks and in the Mardu Vehicles decks that are still around. All right, let's move on to Modern. Now, Modern had a very successful GP last weekend. The format looks super healthy, super diverse, and a lot of players are excited about it right now, but the market is still a little soft. There is a dark cloud hanging over it, and it's called Iconic Masters. Now, the set comes out in November, but we're going to find out what cards are in it this September, and some of the more expensive cards right now, the $60, $70 cards in Modern, a lot of players are shy about picking up, and rightfully so, because they could be reprinted this fall, and everyone's a little bit cautious right now. But let's see what lost value this week. Coming in at number five is Emrakul the Eons Torn, down $1.30 to $43.61. This is the Rise of the Eldrazi version. Now, the main reason you're seeing some softness in this card is simply because at the regional Pro Tour qualifiers this season, everybody who participates in those will be getting a foil promo Emrakul with some new art. It looks really cool. So because of that, this card is going to be soft probably throughout the next season. Coming in at number four is Pact of Negation. This is the Modern Masters version, down $1.46 to $36.02. This is a potential reprint for Iconic Masters, but this also saw some spikes recently, so I think it's just stabilizing down. It's a great card in Ad Nauseum. Coming in at number three is Dark Confidant from Modern Masters, down $1.49 to $48.48. Another key modern staple. However, there's more interest right now in Death Shadow decks, especially the Grixis deck which is one that won the GP this past weekend. So because of that, Dark Confidence a little bit out of the spotlight currently, but it's still seeing a lot of play. Coming at number two is Chalice of the Void from Meriden, down $1.92 to $66.51. So much like last week, you're going to see the other version of this card on the other list. So they're just kind of going back and forth a little bit. Players don't feel comfortable, it seems, to spend $70 for the card, but they do seem comfortable to spend about $65. <laughs> so the two versions of the card keep kind of flip-flopping. Coming in number one is Fulminator Mage from Shadow Moor, down 283 to 3773. Now, this is another card that maybe will be in Iconic Masters, but I think the main reason it's dropping is because it saw some spikes when it was revealed that it was not going to be in Modern Masters 2017 earlier this year. So I think the card's just stabilizing a little bit, but I do expect the decline to stop actually pretty rapidly at this point, considering it is seeing a lot of modern play, and it is in the very popular Death Shadow decks. All right, let's move on to the cards that are gaining value this week. Coming in, number five is Modern Masters 2017 Tarmogwife, up $1.93 to $83. Now, last week I mentioned that all the hot key cards from Modern Masters 2017 have been going up in value. Those are the Fetchlands, Liliana, Cavern of Souls, Snapcaster Mage. But I mentioned Tarmogwife was kind of sitting still around $80. Well, it looks like Tarmogwife's at least starting to move now. And even though it's not the current hot card in the world of modern, it's still an amazing card. He's tons of play in a lot of places. And the other versions of Tarmogoyf are just simply going to cost you more. So it felt a little weird that this was still down at $80. I expect this to continue to climb. If not fast, it might be a slow move, but it's definitely going to move up. Coming in at number four is Cryptic Command from Lorwyn, up $1.97 to $32.99. 
Another card that's just a key control card right now in the format. Number three, Ether Sworn Cannonist, up 227 to 949. Now, this does see a little modern play, but I think the driver for this card is actually coming from a couple other formats. It's very popular right now in Legacy. The Miracles decks kind of survived the banning. They're actually doing pretty good without top. They've adjusted for that a little bit, and this card is a fine sideboard card in that deck. It's also a good sideboard card in Death and Taxes, which is another very popular deck in the format. And because of that, copies of this are starting to dry up a little bit in the secondary market. Now, there's another driver as well, and that would be Commander, especially with a new focus on 1v1 Commander. This is a really good card for any kind of hate bear strategy. Coming in at number two is Thoughtseize, the Lorwyn version, up 335 to 3299. Again, another card that sees playing a lot of places in Modern, but it does show up in those Death Shadow aggro decks that have a lot of spotlight on them right now. Even though the format's very diverse, a lot of casual players especially keep gravitating to those cards because variants of those decks have won some major tournaments recently, even though the top 8s and top 16s, top 32s have been very, very diverse. And coming in at number 1, Chalice of the Void for Modern Masters, up 374 this week to 69.99. Alright, let's move on to the world of Legacy, and we'll begin with the number 5 card that has lost value this week. Chains of Mephistopheles, down 974 to 378, just normal stabilization. Number 4, again normal stabilization, Candelabra of Taunos, down 1051 to 449.99. Number three, Living Plane, down $16 to $126.25. Number two, Gauntlet of Might from Unlimited, down $22.61 to $192.39. Great card for $93.94 format. It's definitely sitting around that $200 price tag. I don't expect that to change. And coming in at number one, we haven't seen it in a while, the Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale, down $51.13 this week to $1,199.95. Oh, how we missed you, still sitting around the $1,200 price point. All right, so let's look at the cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five, we have Tropical Island from Unlimited, up $9.58 to $3.98.25. We have Underground Sea from, wait for it, the revised up 1205 to 337.33. Threw you a curveball there. Number four is Badlands from Unlimited up 1237 to 161.21. Number two is Moat up 1806 to 58006. Again, this is the price point this card has been sitting at for a little while now. And coming in at number one this week, Jihad is up 47.18 to 74.99. Now, this is another card that's really good in 93.94 format. And there does appear to be maybe at least a mini buyout of this card. And don't expect this card to not snap back. This is a huge increase in one week. There definitely will be a snapback, especially if it is a buyout and the seller starts to introduce them back to the market. But I will say over the long run, this card will definitely increase in value. It's a reserve list Arabian Nights cards and they're just hot right now. All right, having said that, that is the market watch for this week. Really interesting week. I think this is going to be the summer of Commander. I think this is going to be a very casual summer. A lot of folks are going to not want to invest into Modern because of Iconic Masters. They're not going to want to play Standard because they've been a little soured to it. So I think with products like Commander Anthology coming out and Arch Enemy and then Commander 2017, these are all reasons for people to get into casual formats, get more and more involved in things like Commander. So I expect to see a lot of Commander cards on the list this summer. I guess we'll wait and see. But until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.